And on the eighth day, God looked down on his planned paradise and said, I need a caretaker. So God made a farmer. Morning, girls. Morning. Good morning, everyone. Welcome back to the 8th Day Chronicles YouTube channel. We're going to take you along on this foggy morning as we do our morning chores. You see all the fog behind us, but it's September and we're not putting any more beans in a jar because we're going to get enough snow this winter. Foggy morning here. I'm not a morning person. <laughs> Good morning, Oakley. Good morning. Good morning, Raven. Good morning, goats. <laughs> Your peanut. Good morning, kitty. Good morning, kitty. Good morning, peanut. Good morning. You girls ready for breakfast? Huh? Everybody ready for breakfast? Waiting patiently. I tell you what, morning farm chores are a busy time. Especially for someone who's not a morning person. Yeah, I know. The farm goes on 24-7, 365. You don't, there's not a vacation day on a farm. I actually prefer the morning chores, but with my work schedule, Darren ends up doing them 98.9% of the time. And the very first thing I do every morning, I've learned that there's one thing on a farm that will feed you every single day, and that's your layer hens. So, guess who gets taken over care of very first thing every morning? Laying hens. <laughs> Give them a little treat in the morning since they've been cooped up, pun intended, all night. <laughs> we do lock our chickens up at night. Um, they're in a coop, in a locked run, in an electric fence. But since the dogs are in the back with the goats, we go ahead and lock the the actual coop door as well. There's Darren hanging up our homemade chicken feeders. Okay, you know, when they come out of the room, coops, a little bit of scratch grains, it's kind of a treat for them. Get their morning started. So hopefully they'll lay me some good eggs today. Right now the coop is closed, but here we go, girls. Turn the dogs out, in other words. <laughs> Good morning. Good morning, Roman. Roman is still not crowing and well I'm not sure the girls like him too much. Still. Right in the middle is boss ginger. You're going to have to get over that if you're going to be the rooster around here. Coop one is done. Coop two is next. This is our black sex link side. These girls are about two years old and unfortunately they have just about laid out for us. They were terrific layers, though. Well, I don't know specifically if they're laid out. 
I think they're just, I'm not overly impressed with the black sex link breed, the hybrid. Uh, you sure can't beat those comments over I'm there. Saying, out of all the years we've had chickens, I've never had egg layers better than a hybrid. And uh, when I say a hybrid, I'm talking about a cross. And the best cross we've ever had is what's commonly referred to as a golden comet. They are egg laying machines. We do have two cinnamon queens in there. They're the ones with the darker tails. And then our little ginger. Ginger's a seasonal layer. Good morning, girls. Ready to get out of there? Start your day? Some of these girls are still big, beautiful, and healthy, and some have started to molt and looking kind of puny. Off to the goats. Good morning, Lana. Are you anxiously waiting for breakfast? You're so friendly. Come on, Peanut. Let's go into the barn. Next thing on the morning routine is to our uh, security team, our uh, livestock guardian dogs, are the next to get taken care of. We don't. Uh, we feed our dogs twice a day. Uh, Of the morning and of the evening and especially any younger dogs that's still growing uh, like Raven she gets a little more she's she's growing and she's bigger she's bigger but we don't feed as much of the mornings as we do the evenings we we feed them really good healthy amounts of the evening uh, so they've got plenty of energy all night to patrol and <laughs> not be hungry. So. Princess is waiting on her food. Yep, she's the barn cat that keeps the mice out of the feed room, so uh, Good morning. let me get hers and then we'll go let the canines eat. She's waiting very patiently. And if you have a barn cat uh, suggestion, you can, you can feed a barn cat, and I'm talking about keeping your animals healthy. If they need food, give them food. Uh, I know some farmers that'll get barn cats and they really don't feed them much because they they hunt all night and keep mice and everything out. Uh, but if you do have a barn cat uh, and if you have a feed room and a hay room, I'd suggest having a barn cat or you're gonna be covered up in mice, field mice. If you do have a barn cat and you feed her or him, feed them in the mornings. Don't feed them in the evening um, because mice and things like that are really active after dark at night. Nocturnal. And, and cats are not Yeah, kernel. and that's when you want your barn cat really on the hunt, uh, prowling your barn to keep all the mice and uh, undesirables away. And feed her in the morning. If she's ate mice all night long, a lot of times we'll f I put out feed for her in the morning. She won't even eat. Plus, if you feed her in the morning, she always comes home. Yeah, and a lot of times she'll just look at her feed and lay down and go to sleep. And I can look at her little belly and tell she's had a successful night hunting, killing field mice out of the barn. So, you know, but I still offer her food every morning. Okay, time to let the puppies in. Are you going to get the goats' feed ready first? Yeah, I'm going to get all the feed ready. Okay. Goat feed is next. Join us back in a second. Okay. All the goat feed is ready. All the dog feed is ready. And time to let the girls up. Good morning, Oakley. Oakley gets fed in the hay room. And we close the door so there's never a dog fight. 
see where Raven is. Who's Raven? Is she not hungry this morning? Uh, she's that way. Just leave her be. She'll come. She wants to. I don't even know where she is. Oh, puppy. Oh, no. She's in the barn. That barn door's open. Come on, Raven. Come on, baby. Come on. Come on, Raven. Come on. Come on. Your food. The camera has Darren out of his routine. He forgot to close the barn door. <laughs> hey, go eat your food. Are you trying to get grass? You'll go out to range soon. I think Darren has Raven a little spoiled. She's getting her treat in her feed and not afterwards. She won't eat much if somebody's walking around beside her. Let's go check out the chinky pim trees while Darren's filling up water buckets. This is an American chinquapin tree. They grow native in our area and the numbers are on, have been vastly declining for many years. It is a dwarf chestnut. Um, it has fruit, a nut, similar to a chestnut. It grows inside a burr. When the burr pops open, fruit is ready to eat but as you can see on the ground the deer have already found them do you see what I see don't believe in luck but I believe in blessings We've got like a, a small pest plot here uh, in front of the, of the barn. It's maybe, it ain't even a half acre, maybe a third. But it's kind of our test plot where we do a lot of different things with the, with the dirt and uh, with seeding and things. And it's kind of our test area that what really works good here, then we apply it to our main uh, fields of hay. Uh, and usually every morning on my farm routines, I, I come through and look after I'm done with the, with the animals. I come through and I kind of give it a quick look over to see how things are progressing each day. I'm starting to get some seed heads here on this, uh, on this uh, orchard grass, which is good. Uh, I know a lot of folks say, you know, you want to cut your orchard grass before it comes to seed head, and, and that's true. But bear in mind, this is a test plot for us, and we're going to cut this as soon as the weather allows us to. It's really thickened up. We've got some excellent legumes here in our red clover. Uh, Just a side note, red clover makes really good jelly. So, you know, you don't we don't want to feel full of red clover but you got to understand that legumes and red clover and your orchard grass and your tall fescue uh, is good to have mixed because the legumes will put certain things into the dirt through their system that your orchard grass and your tall fescues will, th will thrive on and they they work really good together. Plus your legumes is really high in protein. So
so it's good for the good for the livestock. And our, uh, our test plot's looking really good. We're getting some some good tall face view coming up. And one thing that uh, if you come right over here and look, you know, you're gonna have to really zoom in to see this. And you'll only see this in the mornings when there's dew. That's one reason I like to look in the mornings. If you come right here and you look and you see that little spider web in there see it there here's one right over in there okay that's a good sign you want to see that in your hay fields because uh, that's a that's an indicator of life in your soil and that's what you want you want your soil to be alive with all these millions of microorganisms and things like that uh, keeping your soil rich and alive and doing what it's supposed to do and eventually it comes up all that activity in the dirt comes up into your plants and your grasses and our, our orchard grass and our clovers and our tall fescue uh, man this is looking really good if you can look this out through here at how well this is doing and we and we mowed this for hay probably around the first middle of July. July and it's now around the first of September so it's been just a, maybe a month and a week five six weeks and you can see how well this has grown back and it's an indicator of uh, what we're doing with our dirt is working so it's looking really good some of it's Bear in mind that the last two to three days we've had over five inches of rain. And some of this is the rain was so hard a few days, it's matted some of this down just a little bit. Uh, later today, when it, we get some sun, this will all stand up really good. But the rain really beat it down. We had some downpours the last day or two. But it's looking really, really good up here. So you mentioned keeping multiple species of grasses and legumes in your pasture yes. versus one. It, does, is that like rotational grazing with multi-species of animals where certain animals eat certain things and um, kill off parasites for others? So is keeping multiple grasses similar to that? It's yeah, yeah. good for overall health of your farm? To a point, yeah. But, you know, when you've got good grasses, good orchard grass and good tall fescue and and if you've got some timothy grass and we had some timothy in here last year and it's not done that well the the orchard grass and the tall fescue has really out competed it and our our timothy is is just about disappeared uh, but on the top side of that our orchard and tall fescue has done excellent so it was a trade-off that i was i was uh more than willing to live with so uh, i do like a mixture but you know different animals grazing different things is, is probably true to a point you know you could run a couple head of cattle on it and then come in behind them with you know maybe a couple of head of sheep or a few goats um, and then rotate them keep rotating moving them and uh, the cattle will, eat, eat, will leave certain things and then the goats or the sheep will come in behind and eat, eat what's left and then you can of course keep an eye on your pasture moving you know that that works real well we still have a few weeds in here uh, not many this is nice clean hay this uh for our area now you know you get into different parts of the country and it can be different things but for our area this is top shelf hay this would be considered horse quality hay we do have a, a few weeds along here's a here's a horse nettle but they're few and far between they're not many i mean there are very few of them and we're getting some nice nice uh, uh, seed heads on some of our tall fescue and our, and our uh, orchard grass is, is looking good and our red clover is looking good so I'm thinking the, I'm thinking the first opportunity we get 
four or five days of dry weather, I'm going to cut this right. So go ahead and get it cut. Uh, for one last small cut, and we'll see how it does, how many, how many bales we get, you know, per square footage of this. See how it's producing. Man, it's looking good out through there. I'm really happy with it so far. So I'll check on this every morning on our, our uh, morning, my morning farm chores. I kind of just give it a little walk through and look at it and see what kind of life's going on in it and how it's looking. And uh, It's kind of a uh, pleasing thing to do, I guess, for me because it's kind of the fruit of the labors here. See what we're finally producing here and what works here. Like I said, we'll apply it to the other parts of the, the farm. So. Okay, we're about done with our morning chores on the farm. Uh, one thing that, that uh, we do every morning is check all of our waters, our water tanks, and make sure they're clean and have fresh water in them. You can leave water sitting in them for a day or two, but I'm telling you, any, any more than that, and I'll dump them and make sure there is fresh, clean water in them. And one of the last things I do on my way out every morning is check our fences. Uh, you've heard the saying, good fences make good neighbors. Well, you know, if you wake up in the morning and you're not a farmer and, and your neighbor farmer down the road has cattle and you wake up in the morning and you've got cattle standing in your yard making divots all over your yard and tearing up your lawn, you're not gonna be happy, so. And I totally get that. It can happen to the best fences, but when it happens regularly, then you got a problem. But one thing we do is we have fence, uh, electric fences and we use solar fence chargers. And our fence chargers are Carmax. And we really like these. Uh, they're a little pricey, but they're really good. They have a uh, meter on them. And you can see the meter will tell you the green is normal, that your fence is working good, there's nothing down impeding it. Uh, the yellow is marginal, red means you got a problem. And I've found that even if it gets into the yellow, you've probably get, usually got a problem somewhere. You need to go start checking your fences. But instead of having to walk my fences every morning to check them, I can come right here and look at this meter. And this meter will tell me if there's anything wrong with my electric fence. We have had tree limbs to fall and go across our, our our fence. We've had deer to try to jump jump it and catch on some of it and entangle it. That's our biggest problem is deer. Deer, deer are horrible on fences around here. And when they entangle it, I can walk over here and look and this meter will be way down or it'll be into the, to the yellow where it's got entangled on the, pushed it back off the insulator against the T-post and grounding it. And this meter will tell me. I can just walk over here and look every morning at a glance and say, yep, I've got a problem. And I can start walking the fence line. And usually I find it. It's usually some uh, deer damage or a limb damage or something like that. But uh, we're good. Okay, thanks for joining us this morning at uh, Cross Timbers Farm. And, and I hope you enjoyed what Darren does every morning. Um, some of us are morning people and some are not. I enjoy the morning chores better, but I don't always get to help with them because of work. But Darren does a really good job and our goats have bonded with him. And uh, hey, just if you haven't done so already, we would appreciate it if you would like and subscribe. Thanks for being with us this morning. God bless.